On a cloudy night, a man named Noor unblocked the neighborhood's water supply with a shovel. The next morning after the hard work Aunt Stella gave him his well-deserved payment. Another day during intense construction work Noor was the most determined of all the workers carrying dozens of sandbags at once. At the end of his shift as he received his daily wage he heard a girl crying for help in the distance. Without hesitation he ran to the cave from where the sound came and found himself face to face with a hideous creature being fought by several soldiers. Fifteen years ago to the northwest of the kingdom of Clay's young Nor stacked firewood to feed the fire that warmed the humble farm where he lived. Despite his youth circumstances had forced him to act like an adult from an early age, as his mother depended on him due to her illness. After giving her an herbal medication he informed her that he needed to take the goats to the hill. His mother looked at him with a worried expression, but he promised not to go past the rock they had agreed upon. To reassure her, he promised to bring back a rabbit and some herbs for soup, though she didn't seem to improve despite all his efforts. Seeing his mother cough, Nor ran to fetch water, but she pulled him back, wiped a smudge from his face, and lamented from the depths of her heart that she couldn't be there for him in life's moment. Her wish was that he could live the life he wanted. Keeping his promise, Nor prepared the soup and informed his mother that it was ready. However, when he brought her a bowl, he realized the worst had happened. At dawn, the boy buried his mother in the backyard next to another grave he had made with some stacked stones and flowers. Tears streamed down his face as he lost someone so important, but the determination of this child was beyond imaginable. After wiping his face, Nor continued with his life as it had always been. Working in the field and his usual hunting provided his food and kept him sane in the terrible conditions he faced, but he he managed to cope through dedication and hard work. Contrary to what one might expect from a boy his age, he even found time for studies amidst all the physical labor he was required to do every single day. During dinner, he looked at the other side of the table and saw no one there. To keep from getting discouraged, he focused on his bowl of food. One night after a fall while reaching for a specific book, he wanted Nor began to flip through its pages and a memory instantly came to his mind. A few years ago, his father had told him a bed time story about an adventurer who defeated a giant dragon with the help of his friends learned magic from an ancient sorcerer broke the curse of a forest and was rewarded with an elixir that cures everything from the king of death. According to his father, no matter the difficulty level an adventurer would always raise his sword against evil and injustice. Hearing this story made young Nor's eyes sparkle. Now, with the adventurer's tale in his hands, he recalled his mother's words about living the life he desired. At dawn he placed fresh flowers hours on his parents' graves and announced that he was leaving the city for the first time in his life to become an adventurer. Without much ado he bid farewell and set out on a journey that would change his life forever. A little further on he saw two blocks made of a strange material in his path but decided to pass through without thinking much of it. As he crossed the blocks he unknowingly stepped through a magical line. When night fell he camped somewhere in the forest and felt fear from the nocturnal sounds made by the animals but he maintained his composure to prove to himself that he could handle it. After resting and continuing on his way, he saw the big city in the distance and was stunned by its magnitude. Gaining access to the inside of the walls, he wandered through the market always wide-eyed and with a smile on his face. Following his path to his destination, he finally found the adventurer's guild. However, the receptionist dampened the boy's enthusiasm by saying that it wasn't a place for children. Moreover, he reminded Nor that his parents would worry about him. Without hesitation, Nor said, they were both dead. This statement caught the receptionist's attention who then tried to help by saying that younger ones should go through the royal training school before coming to the guild. A few months later eager to be one of them the boys started practicing alongside other students. Some could conjure magic on their wooden swords and Nor tried hard to do the same but his teacher didn't seem very confident in the novice's abilities. After all the only skill Nor had managed to learn so far was parry which involves defending against an attack in a way that allows a counterattack. For this reason, the tutor advised him to seek another path in life. Despite this, without losing enthusiasm, young Nor knocked on the royal army's door and began intense training to become a knight. After more months of practice, the novice instructor delivered the sad news that Nor had developed well below expectations and continuing this training could jeopardize his physical integrity. Being rejected again, he sought to become a hunter, but the teacher said he had no talent with a bow. Then he turned to professional thieves but the local tutor noted that he wasn't capable of disarming traps or perceiving the presence of enemies around him. When he tried to become a mage, the
the master sorcerer made it clear that Nor could only manage to be a human lighter by conjuring a useless spark. Losing his determination Nor's brightness dimmed as he was dismissed from the church for not being an effective healer. After a series of failures he returned to the guild surprising the receptionist by not being accepted into any existing school in the kingdom. Because of this he received the worst news Nor could expect. Unfortunately he wasn't fit to become an adventurer. Head hung low he leaves the big city certain that he is no prodigy. Upon returning home he visits his parents' graves coming to terms with the fact that he lacks the talent for what he most desired in life. However true to his personality he promises himself that he will train even harder. Reigniting his spirit he crafts a wooden sword and recalls his teacher's lessons. If you practice a movement repeatedly you can master it. With this in mind he trains the only skill he developed during those months away from home, the classic parry. Repeating the gesture non-stop he spends days and nights honing his skill alone until a year passes and he can already evade ten swords at once. Three years later Nor could deflect a hundred swords simultaneously. Rain or shine there he was practicing the same move. One night during training he feels a strange aura emanating from his hand which drives him to train even harder. Fourteen years on Nor can deflect a thousand wooden swords yet he knows no other skills and the maturity that comes with age makes this fact weigh more heavily on him. Regardless one ordinary morning he visits his parents' graves and announces that this is his last attempt to live his dream. Arriving at the adventurer's guild the new receptionist looks over his record and learned skills recommending the beginner's school once again. This time Nor wants to skip it but the girl can't register him with such a meager resume. Suddenly the old guild master reappears and Nor greets the man though he doesn't remember who this young man is. After a sharper look the master realizes it's Nor in the flesh and the two sit down for a drink and chat about life. Nor explains he spent all this time training alone but could only develop the parry. In response the master explains there's a rank below E which is rank F where Nor can attempt to get a spot but with conditions. Adventurers of this class can't take missions involving killing or venture outside the city to collect items. In essence only simple nearby tasks for low pay jobs that local beggars usually did to secure their daily meal. Despite this without hesitation Nor accepts the challenge surprising the guild master. Thus began the days of the new rank F adventurer filled with hard work wherever he went. The tasks he undertook were done with the determination he always showed in life's chores. Whether carrying junk or rescuing a cat there was Nor fulfilling his objective while continuing to train intensely to advance in life. To his joy this work time brought him some new skills albeit not very strong ones like feather step or rock throw. Rank F or not Nor had his adventurer's license in hand and that meant he was living his dream, even if just nibbling at the edges. In his mind, it was more than he could ask for. Returning to the day he encountered the monstrous bull, a creature he never thought he'd see outside the books he read before bed the soldier's commander was giving orders to flank the powerful opponent. Their goal was to protect the girl who was trapped and the officer managed to accomplish this even at the cost of his life. With a single blow that minotaur-like beast had crushed the man by hurling him into the wall. Nor tries to help the commander but his life had already slipped away. Leaderless facing the monster the soldiers attack recklessly and they are mercilessly slaughtered one by one. As a result the path to the girl is left open for the beast. Nor tries to protect her with rock throw. The stone thrown at the minotaur's eye enrages it and it turns on the human to exact revenge. Running from the opponent as best he can Nor knows he must use the only skill that can make any difference in this battle. Waiting for the right moment he anticipates the bull's horn attack and uses parry to deflect the blow. Successfully he sends the enemy crashing into the wall but it returns with even more fury. Nor continues using the same technique while his sword gradually breaks under the strain. Though he finds openings for a counterattack, he has no offensive skills keeping him on the defensive. Worse still the minotaur resumes its attack on the girl, so Nor uses his feather step and strikes as best he can with his sword which breaks completely in the move. Even if he never becomes a great adventurer, the boy at least wants to protect this defenseless girl before him. After all, as his father said an adventurer is one who raises his sword against evil. Nor's strike has no significant effect and he is attacked again. Even with his broken sword he continues to defend with parry. To his surprise one of his defenses sends the beast's axe flying back and beheads it. After being saved the girl asks for the adventurer's name but as he is no one important Nor leaves without answering. More soldiers 
soldiers arrive to rescue Lady Lindbergh. Following this victory walking through the city Nor realizes that a creature not even a demon can pose such immense danger. Therefore he decides he needs to train even more. The day after the bloody battle soldiers gathered the bodies of those who lost their lives in the name of Lady Lindbergh who paid her respects with a prayer. At that moment Inez the girl's bodyguard arrived with concern and apologized. However the noblewoman emphasized that it made no sense to ask for an escort on a test mission for the heir to the throne. Moreover she herself had insisted on having no bodyguards. Following this Lord Darkin requested that the noblewoman return to the castle immediately because Lord Rain wished to speak with her. At the castle after speaking with Lindbergh the Lord deduced that a minotaur a demon from the depths of the abyss had indeed been in the city. In this case both Rain and Darkin agreed that someone was behind this and Darkin had discovered that the source of the power that brought the monster was a ring found on the corpse of a merchant on the battlefield. Oaken the mage conducted research and found that the magical stone in this accessory was of unparalleled purity, the kind you would never find on the market. Given this rain noted that minotaurs are a level threats and that not even the wealthy should have the power to purchase something that imprisons such a creature. According to Oaken this ring came from the magical empire of Duridas, which was not surprising considering that this kingdom had a habit of provoking the kingdom of clay. By capturing the princess and summoning an a-level monster simultaneously Lord Rain knew he needed to be cautious about the enemy's next moves. Curiously Duridas had not even tried to erase traces of their involvement raising a question. Regardless it was clear that they wanted the kingdom of clay to start a war as they were eyeing the replicas of the dungeon of the lost that resided there. As for the man who saved Lindbergh documents stated that he defeated the Minotaur with a single sword in a matter of seconds. The espionage corps followed this individual but lost sight of him. It was reported that the man vanished before everyone's eyes as if he were an illusion. With that the lords wondered who this individual was. Back at the adventurer's guild Nor surprised the guild master by returning alive as news of a demon emerging in the dungeon had spread throughout the village. Since the creature had appeared near the construction site next to the dungeon and Nor had not shown up afterward the master had been worried. Nor explained that he had been pursued by some strange people the night before so he went straight home and stayed there. The master asked why Nor's face was so dirty to which he replied that he had spent the morning cleaning mud from the drain before coming. In any case the master commented that it was fortunate the adventurer had not died as he certainly could not have handled an a-level monster. Nor felt lucky not to have encountered the creature as he had only defeated a cow the previous night and had no major problems. According to the master the dungeon monster had been killed by a mysterious individual in a matter of seconds making Nor realize there were many strong people around. The master paid the adventurer for his work the previous day until a hooded girl approached from behind and startled him. Revealing her face Lady Lindbergh apologized for the intrusion but said she needed to find the adventurer using her long distance detection ability. Surprised Nor asked if she was from the thief class but she focused on the mage class with knowledge of all six skill systems though it was so basic that she was embarrassed to discuss it with someone like him. Nor didn't understand why someone would see him that way and since everyone was looking at the princess she invited the young man to talk outside the guild. Before leaving the master pulled the boy aside and asked what he had done but Nor didn't think he had done anything wrong. Continuing the conversation Lindbergh invoked her soundproof barrier to prevent eavesdroppers. Around the city two soldiers were searching for the mysterious man who had defeated the Minotaur but didn't believe they could do better than the espionage corps. Nor mentioned that those guys were looking for someone but Lindbergh replied that he didn't need to worry because the two of them couldn't be seen. After reaching a more secluded spot the princess formally thanked the adventurer for his help as he had saved her life. Not only that, but he had also saved countless people who would have been victims of the monster outside the dungeon. Nor thought this was an exaggeration as in his mind, he had only made a small intervention in the fight, but the princess insisted that the adventurer had been decisive. So decisive that she wished to reward him appropriately especially since her father had asked her to find her savior. Despite all her insistence Nor kept saying he didn't need anything from the girl, even though she emphasized that she was a person of status and could provide incredible things for him like land for example. Once again Nor wanted nothing in return leaving Lindbergh speechless. Determined to give something back the princess cried and declared she would not leave his side until she gave him what he deserved. This phrase reminded Nor of his childhood when he would knock on the cleric's door 
door and declare he wouldn't leave until he was trained. With that he agreed to meet the girl's father since she insisted so much, but warned he didn't want anything extravagant. Happy Lindbergh used her abilities to conceal them both and begin the journey. Arriving at the clay mansion, Nor couldn't believe that such a large structure was the girl's home as he had never seen anything like it before. By the way the girl asked the adventurer's name and then introduced herself as Lady Lindbergh Clays, but since it was a long name she preferred to be called Lynn. A head in ease received her mistress who asked where her father was. The knight informed her that he was in an audience with Lord Rain and with a stern face asked who the man behind her was. Lynn explained that he was the adventurer who risked his life to save her the previous night while Nor wondered if this woman was some sort of servant but couldn't imagine her doing laundry in all that armor. Besides the woman was clearly keeping an eye on him. On the way Anise was escorting the princess to her father when another knight appeared in front of them pointing his lance at Nora's face who started to fear the craziness of the people in this house. Anise asked Gilbert to calm down because this man was a guest of Lady Lindbergh. Gilbert laughed sarcastically assuming this was the guy everyone was talking about even though he didn't see him as someone special. Anise told him to stop being rude and invited him to join the walk saying the more escorts the better. Meanwhile at the audience with Rain, the king expressed his indignation with Doritas, a kingdom that respected nothing not even the non-aggression pact that had been established. According to Rain, the last meeting with the sovereign of that region had made everything clear. At that time the king of Doritas demanded all rights to explore the dungeon in exchange for the loan of military power. When the proposal was refused the monarch promised that the kingdom of clay would pay. Then Lynn arrived greeting her brother and father but as soon as Rain noticed that she was wearing the hermit's cloak he scolded her for leaving the castle again. Lynn argued that she had gone in search of the man who saved her life so the king assumed it was the only unknown individual in the throne room. Nor apologized for coming dressed like that and for not knowing how to behave properly but the monarch really didn't care about the adventurer's clothes. On the contrary he showed all his gratitude and stated that it was easier to talk to those who were unaware of aristocratic etiquette rules. Besides if it weren't for the commoner the princess wouldn't be there at that moment. Shaking the king's hand nor accepted the thanks thinking he could go home now to take a bath but the king made it clear that letting the young man leave without an appropriate reward would be impossible. Whether it was money or territory the adventurer just had to ask. However nor replied that he didn't want any of that and surprised by the commoner's reaction. The king mentioned that he had access to the treasures of the oldest dungeon in the world where all kinds of rarities could be found and stored in the treasure room. According to the sovereign Nor could take home half of the stored items. Rain commented that this was madness, but Nor repeated that he wasn't interested in what was offered because a simple thank you was good enough. Thus the monarch tried one last time by pulling out a sword from behind the throne one the size of himself making his son complain again. However the king understood that this weapon had become a mere decorative object so the commoner would make better use of it. Besides no one would notice if he replaced it with the replica he had ordered. Holding the sword Nor felt its weight and imagined it to be something of unimaginable value so he believed he couldn't take it home but the king downplayed the situation saying it was just an item he had found on a journey. With that the adventurer accepted the gift fortified his physique and wielded the the sword with impressive ferocity. Even more impressive was the fact that he could hold it with just one hand, a detail the monarch made sure to mention with joy and admiration. Speaking of which regarding his daughter, the king personally asked Nora to teach Lin to be stronger because the outside world was becoming increasingly dangerous and he needed someone trustworthy enough to turn her into a true warrior. Nor argued that he had nothing to teach the girl and that she should choose her tutor herself. The king laughed heartily and agreed with the commoner's view then dismissed him from the meeting. On his way out of the mansion Nor couldn't help but think he was taking home an object of inestimable value even though the king had insisted it was just a piece of charcoal. In any case the boy realized that this weapon had the exact width of Aunt Stella's drain so it would be the perfect shovel for a sensational cleaning. At that moment Inez approached the adventurer and asked for a moment of his time. First of all she apologized for her suspicious attitude towards the one who saved her her mistress. Embarrassed by so much formality, Nor asked the woman to stand up, then she emphasized that her duty was to protect the Clay family at all costs, so she wanted the guest to understand the more discerning way in which outsiders were received at the mansion. With that said, she introduced her full name Inez Harness Vice Captain of 
the Clay family's choir of knights. Long ago she was known as the Divine Shield given her efficiency as the princess's bodyguard Lady Lindbergh. To her saving Lynn was the same as saving her own life. Impressed by the woman's titles nor didn't think he had done anything special, but the knight assured him that she would do everything in her power to help the adventurer in any way she could. Seeing that the people of this house didn't accept no as an answer nor saw no other option but to accept this aid. On the other hand, Inez emphasized that the way the guest had addressed the king was unacceptable. Therefore, if he returned to the throne room, he needed to understand that the conduct norms had to be respected. Seeing the boy sweating nervously, she asked for his name last and was shocked to learn it was Nor. Without revealing the reason, the vice captain said her goodbyes until Gilbert appeared next pointing his lance at the guest's face once more. The lancer invited Nor to test his skills, so the poor visitor realized he would never be able to go home again.